Welcome to the Swordfish Art Tutorial. You might be wondering, why is a swordfish included in the Ocean Twilight Zone series? Even though swordfish don't strictly live in the Ocean Twilight Zone, satellite tagging has revealed that swordfish, along with many other large pelagic predators, migrate to the Ocean Twilight Zone to feed. This makes them a very important member of the Ocean Twilight Zone. For this project, you'll need watercolor paper, a pencil with an eraser, a larger paintbrush, a smaller paintbrush, and a fine tip marker or pen, black, blue, and white watercolor paint, something to use as a painting palette, and something to hold water. We're going to start out with our pencil by drawing a long, thin triangle on the left side of our paper that's pointing to the left. Essentially. This tutorial just shows you how to draw a whole bunch of triangles next to each other and how to turn them into a fish. Next to this sideways triangle we just made, we're going to draw another one that has a top corner that is slightly above the one we just drew. So it looks like it's sort of skewed. This one's going to be a little bit shorter and uh, more of a right triangle. Then, following the lower edge of the second triangle, I'm going to draw a straight line going diagonally up, pointing towards the upper right corner of the paper. Then, I'm going to turn this line into a very thin triangle by drawing another line that meets the first line in a sharp point. Now we're going to draw yet another triangle to create the fish's jaw. The swordfish's sword is actually part of its upper jaw. Now I'm going to draw a triangle on the top of the fish to create the dorsal fin. To create the pectoral fins, I'm going to draw some very narrow, long triangles underneath the fish. To draw the anal fin, I'm going to make a triangle near the back of the fish. And finally, to make the caudal fin, I'm going to make two very narrow triangles pointing away from each other at the very, very back of the first triangle we made. Now it's time to make the triangles blend into each other to make this look more like a fish and not like a bunch of triangles. I'm going to start by adding a curved line at the base of the dorsal fin, causing the dorsal fin to become more of sort of a crescent-shaped or hooked triangle. I'm going to erase those initial lines that we don't need any longer. I'm going to do the same to the pectoral fins, sort of rounding them out and making them look more organic and flexible and fin-like. And again, erasing the lines we don't need. We're going to add some shape to the mouth by slightly rounding out where those two triangles meet, and then in the lower jaw, adding a line curving inside to give it an indent. So this makes the lower jaw a bit more pointy and gives it more of a curved, organic shape. I'm again going to erase the lines we don't need any longer. I'm also going to erase some of the very first lines we made, making those large triangles that are still present inside the body of the fish. And now it's starting to look a little bit more like a swordfish. I'm going to redefine that pointy sword at the front of the fish's face by smoothing out those lines in the transition between the face and the sword. I'm going to render the fish's operculum, or gill cover, by drawing a curved line just in front of the pectoral fins. This line won't go all the way up to the top of the head, but stop just before it. I'm now going to draw a small circle close to the mouth to make the fish's eye, and I'm just going to use my eraser to make the sword look a little pointier. I'm going to smooth out the anal fin. and add two small bumps above and below the very end of the fish. Now I'm going to add more shape to the caudal fin by adding some sort of slightly S-shaped lines to the back sides of each of those triangles and making them look a little bit more curved. Now I'm going to draw the fish's lateral line by making a straight line from the very end of the fish up into the operculum. I'm going to add another small curved line right behind the gills and then another one sort of surrounding the mouth 
and going right below the eye. Within this line, I'm going to make another curved line. Then I'm going to make another line curving between the edge of the operculum or gill cover and those lines we just made. From the top of the operculum, I'm going to draw a curving line up to the top of the fish's head, making a small point above the eye. I'm going to make a sort of squiggly zigzag shape, starting at the top of the operculum, zigzagging to the right and then back to the left, and ending on the lateral line. Then I'm going to cross it over the lateral line and bring it down diagonally to the base of the anal fin. I'm going to draw a line defining the edge between the body and the dorsal fin, and then draw a line going from the base of the dorsal fin to the tip. I'm going to draw another line defining the base of the pectoral fins, and I'm going to draw in the swordfish's pupil by making a little circle inside the eye. Now I'm going to grab my blue paint and add it to my palette, as well as my black paint. I'm going to take my larger brush and get it full of water and grab a mixture of blue and black paint. I'm going to start applying this paint to the back of the swordfish. I'm going to fill in that entire upper half of the fish, but not crossing over that squiggly, zigzagging line we made before. I'm also going to paint the top of the head, but not crossing over that diagonal line between the top of the operculum and the top of the eye. I'm also going to fill in that small sliver shape on the dorsal fin. I'm also going to add a thin line of the starker paint to the top of the sword or upper jaw. I'm also going to fill in the caudal fin at the back of the fish with this dark bluish black color. I'm using the edge of my brush using sideways quick strokes to be able to make very thin lines that fit precisely inside the outlines we drew. I'm also going to fill in those tiny little bumps and add a little bit more black over the paint we already applied. Again, I'm going to take a mixture of black and blue paint, but this time with more blue and more water so it appears lighter in color, and paint in the underside of the fish, pretty much painting in everything we didn't paint in already. One interesting fact about swordfish is that even though they're ectothermic, which means they can't produce their own body heat, they have special organs near their eyes that help heat up their eyes and brains. These heating organs probably improve their vision and allow them to more easily locate prey. For the pectoral fins, I'm actually going to come in with an even darker color, so a lot of black, a little bit of blue, and not much water, so that they come out very dark, and I'm going to fill those in. I'm going to redefine the caudal fin a little bit with this dark color. Now I'm going to switch over to my smaller brush and grab some black paint. I'm going to add a little bit more black to the very top of the fish's back and crisp up the fish's edges. I'm going to add a little more black to the top of the head. And to the upper side of the upper jaw.
I'm going to take my smaller brush with a little bit of water and slightly blend in the margin between the light and dark portions of the fish. I'm going to take some more black paint on my small brush and make the pectoral fins a little bit darker. I'm going to take some dark gray paint on my brush and sort of accentuate those curving lines we made around the mouth. This will give the fish's head more texture. I'm also going to accentuate the lines around the gill cover using the same color. I'm going to add some gray, streaky lines to the side of the fish's head to give it even more texture and make it look like it has reflective properties. I'm going to add a little bit of that dark grayish black paint to the edge of the dorsal fin. And then add some streaky gray texture to the lighter part of the fin. I'm going to do the same to the anal fin, adding some streaky gray texture. I'm going to add a little bit of gray to the fish's belly towards the back of the light portion and under the very bottom edge of the belly. I'm going to take some lightish bluish gray paint, so blue and black paint with a lot of water in it, and fill in the small circle of the eye. I'm also going to crisp up the edges of the fish's mouth and jaw a little bit with this same bluish gray color. Then I'm going to add a little bit of light gray texture to the lighter portion of the fish's belly. I'm going to take some dark black paint on my brush so not much water and a lot of paint, and fill in the pupil. This may be challenging because it's such a small circle, but I like to use a gentle dabbing motion to slowly get more and more paint onto the surface. Then I'm going to make a thin rim around the fish's eye using black paint. Now I'm just adding a little bit of black to the tip of the dorsal fin to define the edge of it and give it a little bit of a bumpy, wavy texture. The swordfish might look like it uses its sword to stab or impale its prey, but it is actually used to slash and stun or injure the prey, which makes prey more easy to catch. They feed on a variety of prey, including herring, lanternfishes, squid, mackerel, barracudas, and rockfish. Now I'm going to grab my white paint. Using my small brush again, I'm going to make a white line on the fish's belly, but not quite on the bottom edge, just above the bottom edge of the fish's belly. I'm going to make another white portion just above this white line and fill it in as sort of a globular triangle-ish shape. I'm going to come into the back of that light section, in that corner, and add some bright white paint, so white with not much water in it at all, to make it look like it's reflecting the light. Then I'm 
going to add some white to the back edge of the anal fin, as well as the underside of the very back of the fish on the darker portion. I'm going to add some white to the lower jaw, gently blending it in to the other colors. and some white to the operculum. I'm gonna add some very bright white to the very edge of the operculum to really make it look more defined and like it's very shiny. I'm gonna carry that white all the way up to the top of the head and add some subtle vertical white streaks along the operculum. I'm going to add some white over the top of the eye and right in front of the eye. And a little bit more white to the top of the head. I'm going to add some white to the underside of the sword or upper jaw. And to the very underside of the fish's head, all the way up to the tip of the lower jaw. The white on the operculum didn't come out as bright as I wanted it, so I'm going to add a little bit more. And just a little bit more to the upper jaw. I'm going to add some underneath the eye and add a curving white line around the outside of the mouth. I'm going to continue to touch up certain areas of the fish with white. I'm just going to add some more to the belly, a little bit more to the anal fin, and you can kind of just tweak it until it looks right to you. You want to achieve the effect of a shiny, reflective surface. I'm just sort of blending out that white on the operculum using a little bit of water and a little bit of white on my brush. I'm going to take some saturated white paint on my brush and make some very small white dots to create reflections in the swordfish's eye. I'm going to add one last touch of white paint to the base of the upper jaw. And then I'm going to grab my fine tip black marker and give the fish an outline. So I'm going to just outline the outer edges of the fish. I'm going to grab my eraser and erase all the pencil lines that are left over. And we are finished. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you had a good time painting this swordfish. Bye!